Hey everybody, so the time has finally come for me to give y'all the big reveal of my sewing room and I'm super jazzed and I'm super grateful for all of y'all because I never would have done it had I not had the weird idea to like film it and it's at a level that um, is both realistic and functional for myself and organized which is different and it's been like this for a hot minute and I have realized there's benefit to this. Now, not always to be, like, annoying and, like, ting-ting. Like, you can come in my room and, like, mess it up. It's totally fine. But um, it's helped my workflow, and it's just created an inspirational space for myself. So let's get into it, Okay, huh? so I am going to be all dramatic and, like, enter the door. And I'm just going to do a quick pan around so that y'all can see. And then I'm going to go through the different areas just so you can see how I've chosen to organize it. But now... Let's just, I'm entering, entering. This is of course the piece de resistance, which is my shelves. Ooh, this, this I've actually been able to maintain, which was the hardest thing to, to do. And this right here is my design wall with my awesome table. Some cool organization. That's why I'm putting that stuff for now. Still trying to figure some stuff out. There's Pinky. My hangout space is underneath my desk, laying on Pinky. There's my desk. You saw Felicia there. Alfonso's there. I have my whip cart here. And then this right here has opened up my room, moving everything there. So now I'm gonna just show y'all some of the Nido Mosquito things that I have discovered work super awesome. So these are my shelves. I got 72 inch Billy bookcases and then I got an extender for the top to add more vertical. And my ceilings, I believe in this room are 10 feet, but I don't have a lot of horizontal space. So this really allowed me to use the vertical space. And this is also the backdrop for all of my YouTube videos for the most part. This is where I just thought it'd be cool to have some stuff, like show my family. And then on these uh, bookcases, they have doors that you can get. And like, it's not super like organized or clean in there, but um, I can put stuff. And that's where I put my fabric before I decide to integrate it into my shelves. And that system has been working, but I want this to be as aesthetic as the rest of it. I don't want this to end up like being a junk space, but so far so good with that. And then what else do I have? I got some of these also at Ikea. And these just have like either different projects or themes of things in there. Like this is some Lori Holt like chunky thread that I'm gonna do some crochet. This right here, this is like craft stuff. And this allows me to keep it organized without it looking like junky. And then some of the prettier things, I got these like, they're called really useful boxes and they come in like multiple sizes and they're super helpful. So like this is one brand of thread, it's another brand of thread, just so I know who I'm using as I'm using it. And there are different sizes in those boxes and it has really, really helped me out. As you can see, like I've gone from warm to cool and not only is it pretty, but it's allowed me to like realize which colors I really go for and just to try and have more of a balanced array whenever I'm creating stuff. So those are the Billy bookcases. And then those in the corner, I never like did anything to the baseboards. I decided I didn't want to like jack them up, but these are like Nedby, G-N-E-D-B-Y shelves that are like for CDs and stuff that were perfect. And I was able to get all of that in there like ting ting perfect, um, but I'm never gonna move that until like I ever sell a house or something. <laughs> and then this right here, I wanna show you this because this is one of my favorite storage solutions that I've come up with. Hold on, I'm gonna show you so in more. for these, these were little, um, what are they called? What's this called? It's like a container. I can't remember, a buck. I don't remember the word. So this, I got these at see-through so that I can see what's inside of it. And then these are all of the fabrics that I'm using for my quilt. It's a um, Farmer's Wife 1920s EPP quilt that I decided to slow down. So I wanted an aesthetic way to keep my fabrics in here and I created a gradient 
in that. And then I found these, they're perfect. This size of toiletry bags that are see-through that are perfect for fat quarter folds of fabric, but that way I can see them, pull it out when I'm using it and then put it away. I thought that that was a really clever way to organize fabric that is active, but that won't get like all messed up because otherwise this would have been everywhere and it wouldn't have been cute and I would have lost track. But now I can have a good flow whenever I jump back into it. And I just wanted to share that because I really thought, I thought that was, that was one of those like dust my shoulders up. I thought it was a really good idea. And like, um, hopefully some of y'all can implement that into your storage solution because it's all about using the most with whatever space that you have. And um, yay, so that's the big one. I'm gonna go see if there's anything else over there before I move to this section. So just to go into more detail on how I organize my fabric, just in case this would help some of y'all, I have just all of my solids here in one row on a gradient. And then I have my quilters cotton in a gradient. Those are the fabrics that I'm gonna use the most of. And here, these are dedicated to fat quarter half yard cuts, like in between, um, nothing smaller, nothing larger, because the larger cuts of fabric, like this, I just decided I'm always gonna have like one yard of all of my fabric here that I never touch and never use. But one yard and bigger goes down here, like these are two, three, four yards, still in a gradient, and then some specialty fabric, rayon wall, denims, canvas on the bottom, knit, and then more knit here. Uh, that I can rotate out, like if I get a whole bunch, but this visually, I think this is enough fabric, like to be honest, like I know that's hard to say, but I think that this is enough fabric. So I never want to have more storage than this. So this will visually allow me to see what I have and rotate out. So I, I'm thinking like every year I'm going to, during the holiday, like during December or January, go through it all again and do the same thing that I did in the beginning and get rid of the stuff that like I don't feel all jazzy about and then keep the stuff that I'm jazzed about um, just to keep a rotation and be realistic and so I don't go back into hoarder status with all my fabric. So um, hopefully this sparks some ideas for y'all. It must continue. So over here on this wall, I have a bunch of stuff on wheels that will move around as I need it. This is where it is in the static position and it works the best. I don't move it around a lot unless I need to iron or if I ever have to lower this, I have it as high as possible. And like I can stand and sew. I pull out Alfonso. I stand and sew here. This is my more Martelli table that I showed y'all in one of the other videos that goes up and down. It's hydraulic. This changed my life, like the workflow. Before this, I didn't have a dedicated cutting section and this really helps having this cleaned off. For the most part, I use this to cut. I have, you can't see it, but up there, I moved my aerial view. There's a pull, I'll go ahead and show y'all for some of y'all that like to film stuff. Up there, see that? It's uh, my pole that I attach my camera to whenever I do aerial view. So now I never have to like move this. It's just right there set. I don't know why after like a year or so, I finally decided to do that. So this is my Martelli hydraulic table. It's the smaller one. I have some cute little organizational stuff. And this has actually turned into the area where I do a lot of my ironing. And how I've done that is this right here. I think it's an Alex cart, but it has wheels on it. So it comes out. And coincidentally, this at the highest setting, it slides back underneath it perfectly like perfectly like they were designed together but in this like i have a felt a wool felt ironing pad and then something to protect it underneath and this is my main ironing station where i do my mid-size ironing when i need like a lot of ironing then i pull out my ironing board and then i have a smaller ironing station over there for like smaller like blocks and stuff but it's helped my organization thread here, rulers, can you see? Yeah. Here, other cutting mats. Then I have my EPP drawer. Here I have, let me pull it down, boop, boop. I have more ironing pads, different ones. And then this is like for mailing, 
storage, transportation, stuff like that. And then it just slides back into there to perfection. Yay. And then that right there, I forgot the name of the car. And I'm going to have a list of all of these in a blog post and stuff. But this one is also on wheels. I originally thought it was going to be over there, but I, I like how it's open. But this is on wheels. It moves around. See, whenever Helena wants to sew, she has her sewing machine here. Put stuff on top. But I'm using this as my work in progress, unfinished, what's it called? I don't know what the O is, but my UFO stuff. So, um... Stuff that I'm working on, I have in here. But a word of caution for myself that's documented and I'm saying it out loud. This has the risk of turning into like a junk drawer of projects that I will forget what's in here. So I need to have a better way to organize it and catalog it. So if y'all have any suggestions, put it in the comments here. But for now, this is much better at least I can see them compared to them being on a shelf in a closet somewhere. So once I figure this one out, it's going to be super jazzy. But I love the fact that like it comes out, I can move it over here. Like if I need more space, it can go there. I just love having all of this stuff on wheels. It makes it so much easier to work with. Once again, just helping my workflow. And then some of y'all have seen <laughs> that. That's my design wall. Like a traditional design wall, it never worked for me. Like having like the um, like the flannel. It just, I don't know, it just ended up looking junky. So I got like, what is those called? What's it called? Car, no, what's it? It's not cardboard. Cork. <laughs> I got little cork hexagons that are cute and I can just pin stuff and move it around. And for the most part, I don't need like a design wall to visualize a quilt. Um, that will help and if i wanted to i would just get into illustrator or something but this is my solution and it's aesthetic and i can move it and it's just pretty so it's kind of like art on the wall i would highly suggest anyone who sews like quilts any kind of that then to have some kind of dedicated wall because that's inspirational in itself so um let me move around my room and so now i've panned over to this side this is my workstation and for the most part i've been able to keep this clean and Felicia's back. She got back yesterday. I've been waiting for her to like, you know, like that's the real reason, but I've been waiting for her because I wanted her in this video. Um, and oh my gosh, she's amazing. She got some nips and tucks, so she looks really fabulous. And uh, this desk, it's to Alex. A lot of my stuff is from Ikea. To Alex, what's it called? I say what's it called in like all my videos. Whatever that is called, I forget stuff. I remember it like as soon as I'm not filming. But then I have another big cutting mat there in case I wanted to do cutting there. And my little stations. And then this right here. This is a Martelli rotating table to where I can cut. And then I can put this on there. It comes off. This is an amazing, amazing notion. Um, and then that's it. And then it's just like a tabletop, like a wide tabletop. That I have, and then over there, can I zoom in? No, I can't zoom in. Over there is where I have my fabric, like the fabric that comes to me that I designed. And eventually I'll need more of a storage solution for that, but I think I can get at least four or five more collections in there. And that's kind of jazzy. And then, da -da 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 -da. I put my modem over there. That's the best that I could come up with. Got a box for the cords. I try to come up with some other solutions, but like a modem is a modem is a modem. And any of the aesthetic things for it, like there's a risk of like burning down your house and stuff, and I don't want to do that. That right here, this is, and this is how I do it, folks. Like honestly, this is my favorite way to like um, hang out. So sometimes when I do live streams, I'm out like this, but I come over here and I lay on pinky and then this is like, this is like my zen spot. And then usually I'll tell Alexa to put on like Enya or something. But that's what I do under my desk. And it's a lot of fun. And I love it. So I'm going to bring it in a little bit closer. I guess I can do it with... Da -da 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 -da. So y'all can see what's inside my desk. Um, And like I'm keeping it real with y'all. I'm never going to be like that like... Betty Crocker, Martha Stewart, perfect, like, clean. It's just not my jam. Um, 
this is as clean as it's gonna get. And for some people, they might come to my room and be like, eh, you still need to clean. Whatever, you're not coming to my house. <laughs> but I have it organized in this way. This is my cutting stuff. Do y'all wanna see in it? So that's my cutting drawer for sharp notions. And then this is for non-sharp notions. I know, it's all, it's not cute, but whatever, it's a drawer. I can close it. And then this, it's for like thread. I don't know what that one's for, but it's for mystery stuff. And then this one's for like paper stuff. And then this is for like electronics and stuff. And then now let's come over to here. This right here. That's like my journals and, and not fun stuff, like just documents or whatever. This right here, I have my sewing notions, like for my sewing machine, different feet and stuff. And then this is where I put my electronics, like my computers and iPad. So when I don't need them, they're away. This is like other rulers, like more shaped rulers, um, specialty rulers, and like paper stuff and magazines I've been in. But just stuff that I want to keep track of um, before I decide what to do with it. Um, and it's just nice to look at and to show Helena. She likes to go to that drawer to look. She's proud of her daughter and I'm proud of her. So um, that is over here. What else do I have? Ooh, this is another one of those. I know, I'm trying to do the best. I'm not a cinematographer, y'all. This, this right here, they are for knives. It's for um, like putting knives. I have one over there too right here and anything that I need access to a lot that's somewhat pretty I just put there and it's super strong like it's not going anywhere uh, sometimes I'll put like different needles that I'm using but those two are another one of those like pat on the back like great ideas that I thought of that have helped me with my workflow instead of having like a bunch of sharp metal stuff all over my table I found a spot for them and it's super duper helped. So um, that's my desk. Next, I'm gonna pan over to this and show you how I've organized this, which has become another like amazing um, storage solution that I can't wait to show y'all. So, so this is my final organizational area. As you can see, like I'm 6'3", so this is like really high. I'm using my vertical space and then all of this, like I can touch the wall, never could do this before. It's just opened up my room dramatically being able to do this. But this is a wall control board. I learned this from Nicole of Modern Handcrafts. She had them. The strongest pegboard I've ever seen. It's cute. The accessories are awesome. It's magnetic, so I can use magnets on it. And the flow of it and the aesthetic of it are really pretty, I think. And I never had it like that before, so this is new for me. And there are a bunch of like Nita storage things that I'm gonna show y'all here. But how I have it organized, I have my cans up here on a high shelf. This right here is like spray stuff. This is glue. This is more like stiffener stuff. So it's all that kind of jazz, one, so it looks cute, and two, so it's high and far away from Helena so she can't get to it. And then this is where I put like my starches. And here is Regina. And then, I don't know why I decided to do this. I'm doing it with thread too. But I have like thread and then I have strips. So it's like every time I cut a strip from a new fabric, I put it in here. And anytime I have wasted thread, I put it in here. And I'm going to um, do it for the entire year. I just thought that would be like a neat story, like for me to visually see what my journey through the year looked like in thread and fabric. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but I thought it was neat out. This is my line of corn. <laughs> Raw. <laughs> um, some tape. This, this are some, they're organized well. I know what I'm using them for. These are like cutters. These are needles. These are my lip balm. Cause you can never have too much lip balm. I don't know if you're like me, but I, I have so many lip balm and I can never find them and now I can find them. These are other kind of needles. This is EPP needles. This was bobbins, but not anymore. This is where I just have storage stuff that I'm going to need. And this, this is one that, this is probably one of my favorite things. So these twisty jars, like they come off, but then they disconnect. But this is how I've just, I've stored all the different sizes of my clips. 
And then when I'm working on a project, I'll just take this and I'll go sit down or, or put it where I want. And then I can unscrew the actual top of the one that I need and they're all connected. So I never like lose track of them. And these are just, these are high utility. I have these for a couple of different reasons and functions, but these twisties things are bananas. Love them. And then this right here is a towel rod. It's one of the accessories for the wall control board that I put little clips on right here. And like, things that I want to work on or patterns or things that I'll need for a future project that can fit in a bag, I clip it on there so that I can see them and I don't lose track of where they are. Um, so these are like active projects. And then I have little things for like extra binding anytime I need it. This is like my, my scrap solids bag. I have my calendar. Whew. My husband bought me a calendar. It has like saved my life because now I can, I can see air traffic control of all of my Mr. Domestic stuff and I don't overbook myself like I've done in the past. And what else? Ooh, ooh, these, these. These are not part of the wall control system, but they're magnetic. And I think they're spice racks that like aesthetically looked great. And they, they're not static. Like I can move them around and stuff, like move them up and down. <laughs> and, um, I just love that. That, that honestly, um, if I didn't have all of these accessories, I would probably look for more stuff like that, that has a strong ma mag magnet on it that I can put up there um, so that I can move it around and I'm not stuck with where the holes and stuff are. Then, this is my Rita's rack. I have the smaller Rita's rack here. And this I use for like larger rulers. I'll hang my jacket on it whenever I get in here. This is my hat that Helena bought me. It's a fishing hat. Look at me. I look so cool. A bag, but this, it's multifunctional and I put a lot of different stuff in it. But this, having this here, it's cleaned up this space, like behind you. You can't see it, you saw it earlier. But then it's like, look at all that. Like, ta-da, 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 ta-da. That has changed like the flow of my room. So now I'm going to stop with the specifics, but just show you the general feel and some takeaways that I have from this entire experience. So, yeah. Okay. So first off, thank you all. I am forever grateful that y'all came along with me on this crazy journey that was kind of a joke in the very beginning and I didn't think anyone would watch it to me having absolutely my dream space for myself as a designer and a maker and a dad and an escape and a reprieve, all of that. I never thought that I could exist in a space like this that was functional and still felt like me and didn't feel like I don't know, I feel like like too clean of a room would be oppressive and I would, I would be afraid to like create in it, but absolutely that's not what happened here. I'm inspired to create even more. My workflow is better and I know where everything is. And so whenever stuff isn't where it's supposed to be, I put it back for the most part. And when I'm in the middle of like a craft NATO, I allow my room to get, get totally like wrecked and then it doesn't take very long to clean it up. So. That is my takeaway for anyone who's like me and is not like naturally clean. Um, I just, I don't see it. I, I get tunnel vision on my project and I don't see what's going on around that. It's definitely helped me, it is worth it. And this I can keep up with for forever and ever and ever. And some takeaways. This room, I'm not gonna say it's not big, but I see much bigger rooms out there. It is nine, by 15. So it's a decent size like office space, but for everything that I do in here, I film my YouTube videos, I create, I'm working on probably at least 10 projects at a time with a deadline, that there's a lot of action going on here that it was all about vertical. This saved me like so much. And I know there's the whole like, you shouldn't have fabric and direct sunlight, all that just whatever. I don't do rules. I don't care. I'll deal with it when it happens. <laughs> but for now, 
this has like really, really um, both inspired and helped me see what I have. And it's, it now will keep me from having too much because there is a limit, folks. I know we all joke that there's not a limit. There's a limit on what we need. Like, come on, folks. There's a limit. I've learned that. And this is both playful and functional, and it will probably evolve over time. And I really like that about it. And I'm going to evolve the storage solutions, but having different storage solutions and really like bringing everything off of that and sitting it on my floor, looking at what I had, and then from there coming up with organizational solutions allowed me to come up with those that I can sustain. And that was new for me because previously I would just like buy stuff. Um, because I thought it was cute and I was like, oh yeah, I'll use that. And then like, I wouldn't really use it for its function and it wouldn't like do what I needed it to do. So taking the time to really get rid of stuff you don't want, visualize what you have. And then, then by the organizational stuff helped on all of this. Like even the furniture, it told me what I needed by what I had. That was the biggest takeaway. And then just to use vertical all around and maximize it, it lifted everything off the floor. And then the little itty bitty things like the magnetic, the magnet stuff, like put magnetic stuff everywhere, everything being on wheels, it's transformed my workflow. Having a dedicated sewing, dedicated um, cutting, like that has changed my workflow. Everything is just, it's lighter and freer and more creative and more awesome and I am super jazzed about what the future holds now in my new space. I'm super grateful once again for all of y'all. And if you have any questions or if there's anything that y'all want to see closer, I'm not going to do another video, but I'll definitely take pictures and I'll include it in the blog post that's in the link here. That one can be like a fluid document and I can add um, anything that y'all wanted to see more of or if you have questions. And once again, if you have any suggestions, or if y'all have come up with anything in your own spaces that's super neato, then put that in the comments. If somehow this has inspired you to clean, put that in the comments. Let's share our stories, our truths. Um, if it gets messed up again, I'm going to show y'all and share with y'all because I just like to keep it real. I think that's how we can all grow if we're all just real and authentic. And I'm never going to pretend to be anything that I'm not. And I am not a, like, teen, teen, clean person. I will never be. But, um... I found something that works for me. So thanks for coming along with me on my journey. Keep it positive. Keep it clean-ish. And I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>